There is a well-known Marshallese proverb that goes, Don't drift away from these canoes, for they are your path through life. For millennia, the canoe has been the heart and soul of Marshallese culture. Today, that culture is changing, and the role of the canoe is changing as well. What used to be the foundation upon which survival in these harsh islands was based is today used primarily only for races and special occasions. the drastic changes which modern Marshallese culture and way of life are undergoing mean for the ancient tradition of the Marshallese canoe. The nation we now call the Marshall Islands is made up of two chains of 29 coral atolls and five coral islands spread out over almost one million square miles of ocean in the region of the Pacific, now known as Micronesia. The original inhabitants of the Marshalls traveled to these islands on outrigger canoes thousands of years ago, likely from the Solomon Islands north through Kiribati. Because of its crucial importance for transportation, fishing, and food gathering, the canoe was literally the foundation of life in this harsh atoll environment. There are three types of Marshallese canoe. The wallop, or voyaging canoe, was up to 100 feet long and could carry 50 to 75 people. Although common in the past for inter-atoll travel, today wallop are rarely, if ever, built, and there are few still in existence. The tipungal, or mid-size canoe, is 25 to 30 feet long and can carry up to 10 people. Tibungal are still used today for sailing and fishing within and outside of the lagoon. The Kurukur is the smallest canoe, approximately 10 to 15 feet long, capable of carrying one or two people for paddling or sailing within the lagoon. Because of its ease of construction and popularity in the national canoe races, the Kurukur is the most common style of canoe today. The Marshallese canoe was and is one of the most technologically advanced traditional watercraft in the world. There are three aspects of the canoe in particular that make it so remarkable. The first is the asymmetric hull, which like a bird's wing is rounded on one side and almost flat on the other, allowing the canoe to sail extremely close to the wind. The second is the outrigger shock absorption system, which allows the outrigger to move independently from the main hull and absorb the impact from rough seas. The third is the double fronted hull and lateen sail, which allows the outrigger to be kept on the windward side when changing direction while sailing by simply moving the sail from one end of the canoe to the other. In the past, Canoe building knowledge was held by a small number of families or lineages called buij. The knowledge use and transmission was highly regulated by the chiefs, who sought to maintain control over important bodies of knowledge such as canoe building, weather forecasting, and navigation. Because building a canoe was such a major undertaking, canoe building was a community wide affair requiring the effort of many members of the village under the direction of the chief to complete. And building a canoe is, in the past, it weren't, it was a project. It's not just building a canoe. It was a huge atoll or community effort. There should be people, I mean, and they plan it, they plan it. It's not just something that they say, okay, we want to build a canoe tomorrow. They actually have meetings. There are meetings to plan for every single step of the way. 
they actually have magics that they sing. Yeah. So the magic will tell you when and where you build a canoe. When they build a canoe, people, some people today said, oh, it's a man thing, but it's a community thing. It's an anthropology, it's a people thing. People, there should be, uh, there's a group of people that actually make the stone edges. There are a group that makes the sail. There are a group that cook the food. There are a group to do the chanting. There are a group that do the lashing. And it's, it's coordinated that no stop. There is a phrase that says, Pune pungun mul, waran pungun maliyar. Pune pungun mul, count the rhythm of the waves breaking on the reef. That rhythm should be the same rhythm, same continuous rhythm of the hedges hitting the hall. So many things have to be thought out before that. Because once you start, just like the rhythm of the breaking waves on the reef, never stop. That's the difference. The difference long time ago mm -hmm. and today is today is, it's a job. Yesterday is a community effort. Mm -hmm. Today, these practices are changing to reflect the rise of a wage based economy and the increasing centrality of the nuclear family. Canoe building and sailing was also primarily a male activity although today this is changing to some extent as well. In addition to being highly technologically advanced, the canoe is also one of the three foundations of Marshallese culture. The relationship between the canoe and culture is most evident in the language of the canoe, or Kajinwa. The meaning of the names of all the parts of the canoe are highly symbolic. Here, canoe builders explain the meaning of part names such as the Rajak Kare and Rajak Man, or female boom and male boom, and the Joj, meaning kindness. <laughs> Chewji, 
ఏది రోగాయి ఎలా నేనే ఆవాలి ప్రజెంట్ మిరగా పాడగా చూడ వాయిగా రా పుడిచాను చెన్ని అదే మరి అదే పోయిపోయిన ఆదో పామలి పుజి నువ్వు ఇది ఏమి ఎన్నరం పొగదు పొగద ఆరంభి చెంది ఆయన ఆయన మిరగా వాయిగా రల చెక్ వా వాయి కంబని ఆడ పాదగా వచ్చాను నేను నేను ఆరం ఇక పాపని ఇలో ఇలో ఆలుగా నిన్నగా ఎవరు ఓడిపోయిన ఆలుగా It is obvious that the canoe is inextricable from Marshallese culture as a whole and that Marshallese culture is literally embodied in the form and function of the outrigger canoe. This video will explore how the role of the canoe in life in the modern Marshall Islands is changing, but how the importance of the canoe in modern Marshallese culture is staying the same. Nemrik is a small atoll located at the southern end of the Ralik or western chain. The atoll consists of only two islands, totaling one square mile of land surrounding a very small three square mile lagoon. Maramar, the smaller island, is uninhabited but is visited often for food gathering and picnics. Only the larger of the two islands, also called Nemrik, is inhabited, with a community of about 800 people. On Namarik, canoes are still an integral part of daily life. Today, Namarik is one of only two atolls in the Marshall Islands where people still use canoes every day, and canoes are much more common than motorboats. However, even on Namarik, the canoe tradition is changing, evolving to reflect the trends of modernization and westernization being experienced in all aspects of life in the Marshall Islands. Because of its location at the rainy southern end of the country, Namrik is a green and lush atoll. There is usually plenty of rainwater for drinking and bathing, and local foods such as breadfruit, pandanus, coconut, and the famous Namrik bananas are plentiful. In many ways, Namrik is typical of outer island Marshallese life. Most people live in wood or concrete block houses on the lagoon side of the island. There is solar electricity, but no running water, and people cook over open fires. Everyone knows each other, and the community comes together regularly to celebrate holidays and special events. Most households own small kurkur-style canoes, which the men use multiple times a week to provide fresh seafood and other local foods for their families to eat. Standing on the beach on a windy day, as many as half a dozen canoes sailing across the lagoon toward the fishing grounds is a common sight. On Namrik, canoes are also used to haul copra and for other income generating activities, tasks which in the rest of the country are usually accomplished using motorboats. The people of Namrik are very passionate about the importance of canoes in their island community. Hello. ఆ మినీని ఇలా ఆడతారు పెద్ద ఇప్పుడు తోలకులా అవతరాయాలన్న జిగి చిగురు అలాగే ఎలుగు మినీ రావడం పోయి చోరిలో కూడా కాదు చిగిలి పోచ్చే పోచ్చే కరీరీల పై చూ చే పోయి కరీరీల పై చూ ఇంకా పై నుంచి చాలా మినీ ఎలుగు రావడం చకరాన్ని ఎక్కడ చక్రాన్ని <laughs> పొలం కజరపల్లో నేను అలాగే ఏ తోలంగా తొక్కిలేదు ఏదైతే నాకు ఎగదు పోయేది 
tangarai mini ni ilo awo tarara chabare do e chala wanwa eli kula man tarara kene gai awali bien ngai jagali ni na manga ngai ni reji to kujen chana rai ngai ni chan chan tare ilo tima awali ba awo tarara ngai ro kambole ni ro boli a kene ni kwe ngai e orwa mwa Lelen kawan kuli we, lelen awali, ikemu family ay, ilo awal bien. However, although canoes are still quite common on Namrik, the form of the canoe tradition has changed over more than a century of missionization, colonization, and westernization of Marshallese life. Although most Namrik men know how to sail canoes, and many own their own canoes. Only a few are master builders. Today, it is common for the few master canoe builders to contract out their skills receiving cash pay in return for building new canoes for the people of the atoll. Even the physical nature of the canoe has also changed. Western power tools and modern materials such as plywood and epoxy are used to build the canoe, and some aspects of the basic design are different as well, such as the modern practice of carving the hull out of a single piece of wood. These changes to the canoe tradition mirror the changes broader Marshallese culture and way of life has undergone and continues to undergo into the present day. Namarik children are surrounded by canoes since birth. They grow up knowing the names of the parts of the canoe, and boys begin to learn to sail at an early age. However, although the children of Namarik are familiar with the canoe to a degree which the majority of Marshallese children today are not, the vibrant Namarik canoe culture is the exception, rather than the rule, for the modern Marshall Islands. Even on Namarik, the canoe tradition is changing echoing the state of the broader Marshallese canoe tradition in the nation today. In accordance with the westernization of modern Marshallese life, on Namrik the canoe is being integrated into a western-style cash economy and a more individualized way of life. These modern changes are just that, changes, neither innately good nor bad, simply part and parcel of modern life in the Marshall Islands. Um. <coughs> Come <laughs> Ang ngayon ngayon yung 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 y
आवल मिन गुर के जर बल क्या जे रे चप के इन बोर के इन का मा के इन कर दो जाओ ये मेलेंगे चतलम इदलम प्रॉब्लम के पाम ले आ ई चम रों उया मंगे मोल कइन के ने बाल लमना के उया फ्यू मी गाय कर छू रहा है कजो बुगत पे इन मरो कब्बु कर कर कजरवल कर कर गनाई भी हुआ The shape and form of the canoe tradition on Namrik Atoll may be changing, but the importance of the canoe in Namrik life remains the same. In a nation that has become largely dependent on ships and motorboats, the canoe is the lifeblood of this isolated atoll community, and the people of Namrik adamantly believe that their lives are better because of it. Kwajalein Atoll is the largest coral atoll in the world and one of the historic centers of power in the Marshall Islands. The two main population centers in the atoll are Kwajalein Island and Ebai Island, located approximately three miles apart and connected by reef. Since World War II, the U.S. military has been present in some capacity in Kwajalein Atoll, and in particular on Kwajalein Island. Today, only the U.S. Army Kwajalein Atoll, or USACA, and its associated American workforce is housed there. Beginning in the 1950s, the Marshallese populations of Kwajalein Island and many of the other islands in the atoll were moved to Ebai Island to accommodate the USACA Kwajalein Missile Range and Regan Test Site and its long-term ballistic missile testing program. Ebai Island is only 78 acres, or one-tenth of a square mile in size. Now, Ebai is the secondary urban center in the Marshalls, with a population of close to 15,000 people, consisting primarily of Marshallese relocated from the rest of Kwajalein Atoll, and others who have migrated with their families from the outer islands in search of jobs, health care, better education for their children, and the other trappings of a more Western lifestyle. Like elsewhere in the Marshalls, Canoes were the primary method of transportation throughout Kwajalein Atoll well into the 20th century. During World War II, Kwajalein was the site of many major battles, and canoes, warships, and seaplanes coexisted in the Kwajalein Lagoon. Later, the U.S. military on Kwajalein helped build canoes for Marshallese who were relocated from other islands, and then transported those canoes, along with the relocated communities, on giant freighter ships to and from their new island homes. The history of canoes in Kwajalein Atoll is closely linked to the history of the chiefs, or Iroj, there as well. For many generations, Kwajalein Atoll was the historic home of the most powerful chiefs in the Ralik or Western Chain. There were three paramount chiefs in the Western Chain. Kabuas, the Loyats, and the Takuas. In those days, they used to have the chiefs live on Kwajalein Atoll. And they used to sail south toward Namu, Island of Lawlat, Chagut, Namur, Yapon, to gather food. Mm -hmm and of course to control the people on those atolls. Mm -hmm. And they used to kind of the big the big, big and the wala. Mm -hmm. Chiefs and canoes are closely related in Marshallese culture, as they are both identified as crucial upholders of tradition. Canoes were the something that the chief show off with. Like a status symbol. Yeah, status. This is my fleet. Mm -hmm. This is my canoe. Mm -hmm. The design, the way they, you know, they were, they, they, been, they kept maintaining it. It's the status. Mm -hmm. And the, it makes the chief very proud. So would one chief have many canoes that he could use? Usually, at the, maybe, according to what I, they usually have the big, they call it wallop, uh -huh. the, the biggest canoe. Maybe a chief will have 10 or 15. Sometimes they have 100 of them, especially the, the big chiefs, mm -hmm. like the Western, Western Atoll chiefs. Mm -hmm. 
like Kapuas and Goyaks and Tapua. And they usually, according to the story I heard, they usually have around well, probably a hundred of canoes. Mm -hmm. They go in group, a big military group, like a big, just big army of people. Mm -hmm. can see how important the canoes yeah. Modern chief, or Iroj, Mike Kabua, is one of the primary landowners on Ibai and is a strong supporter of the continued importance of the canoe tradition for his people on Ibai as well as throughout the nation. What do you see as the, the role of the canoe or the importance of the canoe to marshal these people today? Oh, it still exists. It's very important. Yeah. And in compare, well, look, fuel is going up yeah. and wind is free. Yeah. So it's very economical. Yeah. And that's what we are that's why I'm behind that all hundred percent because I'm trying to let my people see it. Look back. What's yeah. wrong with our canoe? Yeah. It's still gonna take you there, but maybe a little slow, but I'll give you there. Yeah. And it doesn't cause anything. Yeah. And it's very, very unique way of preserving it and using it today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. However, on Ebay there's a disparity between the lives of the chiefs, like Mike Kabua, who supports the resurgence of canoe building and other traditional practices, and the harsh day-to-day -day reality of life for the common people, whose daily living conditions are characterized by overcrowding, extremely high unemployment, entire extended families living on only one or two people's wages, and specifically in regard to the canoe tradition, a total lack of local resources or money to buy foreign building materials. Outside of the chief's property, the largest and perhaps the only other significant site of canoes in the atoll is at the Marshallese Cultural Center, located on the Usaka military base. This museum has the largest collection of model canoes canoe paraphernalia, and historical canoe photos in the country. These canoe exhibits are presented alongside displays of traditional mat clothing, shell fish hooks, and other historical relics associated in this museum setting with a long-gone past. For the American presence on Kwajalein Island, the Marshallese canoe is primarily just an object for display, far removed from its crucially important practical and cultural role in Marshallese life. In spite of extremely difficult living conditions, some people argue that Marshallese culture is maintained to a greater degree on Ebai than on the other urban center of Madrill because of the greater communality of life on Ebai. On the other hand, on a tiny island with close to 15,000 people and practically no trees, resource-dependent aspects of material culture such as canoe building are much more difficult to maintain in this kind of ultra-urban environment. However, despite overcrowding, westernization of life, and an overwhelming preference for the convenience and ease of modern motorboats, canoes have never disappeared from this island, neither in presence nor in spirit. Majuro Atoll is the capital of the Marshall Islands and is home to more than 25,000 people, approximately half of the total population of the nation. The population of Majuro is steadily increasing as people continue to move there from the outer islands in search of jobs, income, and better education for their children. The most developed of all the atolls, Majuro houses hotels, restaurants, national government buildings, private businesses, multiple villages, and numerous public and private schools. Although not as common as on Namarik, canoes are more prevalent on Majuro than on Ibai, the other urban center in the Marshall Islands. Building canoes is easier on Majuro because it's less densely populated and there are more local resources. In addition, more people are interested in sailing because of the regular local and national canoe races held there. Despite this, however,
These days on Manjaro, canoes are rarely used for subsistence living. Urban young people especially have very little practical knowledge of canoes today. Although interest is increasing through the efforts of the vocational training program Wan Island in Majal or WAM and other cultural organizations. Do you think that a lot of people are learning to build canoes today, a lot of young people, or do you think it's kind of dying off? No, no, no. It's, the interest has started and it, it's growing. It's growing again. It's growing. It's growing. I, yeah. I sit with friends and talk in the evenings. And almost every other time we get together, someone says something related to Kenya, whether it be the races that mm -hmm. happened the week before. Mm -hmm. This person and this person just brought in a Kenya from outer island. Mm -hmm. This person and that person planned to build one. Mm -hmm. So no, it's, 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 it's an interest that it's growing. I think. So it's still very much a part of people's everyday life, even if they don't have their own even even it's still something that people yes. talk about and think about. In fact, uh, yeah, on days they have canoe races, you'll see more people standing along the shoreline mm -hmm. watching than you would when they have yacht races. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that says something. Today, privately owned canoes are relatively rare on Majuro. Some chiefs and landowners still maintain canoes, but they are used far more often for racing and as a prestige symbol than for everyday subsistence or transportation. Numerous local and national canoe and yacht races are held every year in the Madro Lagoon. The races are incredibly popular, and for most people on Madro, they are the only experience they have with canoes. The races also highlight the coexistence in Madro of Marshallese canoes alongside western style yachts and motorboats. A number of the races include both yachts and canoes, and viewers are always particularly excited when the smaller Marshallese canoes win out over the larger foreign yachts. So when you think about the future of the Marshall Islands, what do you see as the place of the canoe in the future? Recently, uh, recently especially here in the center, they built the canoes for the race. Mm. And that's about it. For sports, mm -hmm. that's all they interested, especially when they put out these big prices. But here on Madero, you yeah. don't think there's much chance of people <laughs> going back to like fishing yeah. with canoes? And, yeah, I don't see it. In addition to the canoe races, Madero is also home to Wan Island in Majal or WAM, which is the only formal canoe training school in the country. In WAM's vocational training programs for at-risk urban youth, the canoe tradition is currently being both revitalized and reinvented. The WAM perspective is that not only is the canoe important in and of itself, it's also a valuable tool or vehicle through which to pass on broader cultural knowledge, as well as modern job and life skills. Canoe, it's a very fascinating part of the culture, and uh, it's it attracts a lot of young people, and a lot of young people want to be part of this. Uh, they want to know something about their knowledge, and the easiest way to do, you know, the easiest and the fun, the best way, more, more the most fun way to do it, is by um, being part of this canoe uh, culture. We use the canoes as the medium of this program but um, you know the, m the more uh, the most important thing is not just the canoe it's what's around the canoe mm -hmm. the knowledge is knowledge that you get out of this traditional tool is way beyond what everybody you know think life skill is part of it you have to be there sunrise to sunset it's something that you need for this modern world. You need to know this. It's got to be part of you. The, the tools that you use around this curve, curvature structure, it's the same tools that you'll use in a modern company, uh, in a modern uh, work. 
the kids are learning about these about the strip the canoe but they don't know that they're actually learning so many other things they're they're learning carpentry out of the canoe they're learning life skill out of the canoe um, they're learning math geometry out of the canoe I would say that this this uh, canoe is something that is so important that we I mean, and people have to realize how important it is to us today. This revolutionary methodology is a departure from the way knowledge of canoe building and sailing was passed down in the past. But nevertheless, WAM is reconnecting urban youth to their traditional culture, as well as helping to keep the canoe tradition alive in the modern Marshall Islands. Overall, daily life on Majuro is fairly westernized. Formal schooling for children and wage employment for adults is the norm. And modern Majuro youth are fully comfortable with television, computers, and the other trappings of the Western world. While many youth believe that it is important to maintain the canoe tradition and other aspects of Marshallese culture, they express frustration with the difficulty of balancing the traditional practices with the demands of modern life. Life on the outer islands is easier, they argue, because there are less modern distractions, such as TV and alcohol, and canoes and other traditional practices are still an important part of daily life. <laughs> On Majuro, the disparity as well as the interconnection between Marshallese culture and identity on the one hand and a Western lifestyle and cash economy on the other is particularly clear. This is a complex issue with which modern Marshallese youth continue to struggle. No one culture or way of life is innately better than the other, and likely this issue will continue to evolve as the Marshall Islands continues to develop within an increasingly globalized world. Thanks to the efforts of the Wan Island and Module program and the modern revitalization of other traditional knowledge and skills, hopefully modern Marshallese youth will never have to choose between their traditional heritage and their modern identity. The canoe tradition is nowhere near as widespread as it once was. In the past, the canoe was literally the foundation of life in the Marshall Islands. Today, canoes always exist alongside Western methods of transportation, and often canoes simply aren't used at all. Despite the popularity of WAM's youth training programs, many young people either aren't interested or more commonly don't have the opportunity to learn the old ways as they are faced with increasing modern demands on their time. Nemerik is one of only a very small number of atolls in the Marshalls where canoes are still more common than motorboats. A subsistence lifestyle based on the canoe is no longer the norm for the majority of the population of the Marshall Islands, especially in the urban areas of Majuro and Ibai. It's difficult to maintain many aspects of traditional material culture, especially canoe building, when local resources are disappearing rapidly and life is often a struggle just to make ends meet in an increasingly Western world of wage employment and cash economy. However, despite Westernization and a changing way of life, many people believe that the canoe tradition 
is still a vital part of their unique Marshallese culture and identity. This is illustrated particularly well when people responded to the question, what would happen if in the future the canoe was to disappear? Well, I personally, I think we would lose. We would lose an important part of our culture. Mm -hmm. The canoe is just as much part of our culture as our our, our legends, mm -hmm. uh, our our knowledge of of uh, building fish traps. Mm -hmm. In fact, it's it's part of. They live together because right. to take the fish trap out onto the reef and then you know, submerge it mm -hmm. so you can get fish to go in, mm -hmm. we need a canoe to take it out. Mm -hmm. So we, there would be that loss. That, mm -hmm. Of course, you can take it out on the motorboat, but mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's diluted. It, it's no longer there. You, you have one link missing mm -hmm. it's this, this series of. Mm -hmm. Because you have the canoe that transports the trap out onto the river, gone. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's that's one way. Of it. And you would you would not have the the opportunity for men to gather and, and, and share thoughts and mm -hmm. you know renew ties. Mm -hmm. So there may by not having Canoes being built. You no longer have men gathering in groups, working on a, a common mm -hmm. project mm -hmm. that uh, can lead more or allow for social tension to develop. Mm -hmm. I think that um, people would think more about themselves. People won't care about the water. People won't care about planting trees. So it would be, you know, one man for himself. So the canoe is a multi-task, a multi um it's everything. Mm -hmm. So the canoe is really, it's something special. Very special. The only thing, the only knowledge that is practical to the max. This is the only thing in the marshals that only the family can do. So it's very, very important. Mm -hmm. See, togetherness is, it's, whatever way you look at it, is working together, sharing knowledge. That's the basic thing. Mm -hmm. It's the way of survive, survival. Without this, that would be a huge cut into our uh, life today. Mm -hmm. And it would be a huge shame. There are many reasons for this strong belief in the continued importance of the canoe tradition in modern life. Practically, the canoe offers a more independent, sustainable way of life through decreased reliance on imported fuel and foods. Culturally, the canoe represents a unique link to a still relevant past and a locally meaningful future. However, most people agree that today, Marshallese life is changing, and in order to continue to be meaningful in the modern world, the canoe must change as well. 
There are many examples of changes the modern canoe tradition is currently undergoing. There are physical changes to the canoe and methods of building. Most modern canoes are carved with a solid hull instead of the traditional multi-part hull. And plywood and fiberglass canoes are increasingly common. Western power tools have been widely embraced as a more efficient and effective method of canoe building. Socially, the canoe tradition is being democratized. Canoe knowledge is no longer held by only a few bridge or lineages. Today, most people agree that the canoe tradition should be a universal knowledge, available equally to all. Many people also believe that the most effective way to pass on canoe knowledge today is to have experts teach it in schools in order to reach as many youth as possible. The WAM program encourages girls to learn to build and sail canoes along with boys. For the most part, the canoe tradition has been a historically male world. However, today many people agree that women as well as men should learn the traditional knowledge and skills. Finally, the canoe is currently undergoing a transformation from being primarily a practical subsistence tool into becoming a symbol of identity and meaning for the modern Marshallese world. This change is the most recent, but in some ways the most important, because it provides a way for the canoe to continue to be meaningful in the everyday lives of the 75% of Marshall Islanders who live in the urban centers and no longer participate in a subsistence way of life. What do you think that now people are identifying with the canoe more as a symbol of meaning and importance? Well, because life has changed. People are more into you know, jobs. Mm -hmm. in, in some ways, it's, it's impractical to, let's say, you live on, on Seventh Island down. Mm -hmm. To paddle your canoe into work in mm -hmm. the morning, then you know, turning mm -hmm. your motor on. And so I, I, I think it, it has to do with how people, their way of living, that that's changed. We're not going to expect everybody to paddle canoes around. Yeah. Yeah. But we're done with that. Yeah. Uh, what I would like is for the canoe to be remain part of Marshall's culture part of how people see the martial language. Not, not a motorboat, not, not a bicycle or a scooter. Okay. It, it, that is my number one push. It becomes a, a symbol, a, something that you see a canoe, you say, okay, that's not a cloud. That's not the canoe from the game. Mm -hmm. That's a Marshallese canoe. Mm -hmm. So having canoes be part and remain part of Marshallese culture tomorrow in the future gives us an identity that people from outside will know us by. Mm -hmm. And that we can be really proud of. Mm -hmm. It's now a symbol is 
outside of prestige and, and uh, identity that it should remain of vital art and, and, and a symbol that uh, will always be art. The consequence of all of these changes is that even though the canoe means something different to Marshallese culture than it did a millennium ago, or even a century ago, and even though the canoe occupies a different role in Marshallese life than it used to before the adoption of Western boats, the canoe continues to be relevant to both traditional culture and modern way of life. Even though Marshallese culture has changed throughout the past and continues to change in the present, the canoe tradition is changing along with it. And no one wants to imagine a world in which the canoe doesn't exist. The canoe tradition is a link to broader Marshallese culture. Keeping the canoe alive means that Marshallese culture will continue to exist as well. The canoe is fundamentally linked to what it means to be Marshallese, in the past as well as today. The role of the canoe in Marshallese life has changed and will continue to change into the future. But the importance of the canoe as a practical tool, a cultural connection, a symbol of identity, or something else entirely will never completely disappear from the Marshall Islands.